This is a distinct program with students who you would describe as having low incidence disabilities. I know the language kind of changes. Billy, I like the way you're using full sentences and that I heard you use your speaking voice. One thing that was really important to me that I knew was important, didn't really understand how to implement, was how to create a culturally responsive classroom. Nice. And, and specifically for the, for the students in this classroom, it really ended up being about communication. Get students to participate in building their own community. And Dan helped kind of feed this back to me and frame this in a way where I was like, oh, that's, I'm being culturally responsive by putting communication at the forefront. 49 minus 83 equals minus 34, is that correct? That was gonna be the shared learning outcome for our classroom. By making that the expectation is that if you don't wanna do something, you need to communicate it. If you're feeling frustrated, you need to communicate that you're feeling frustrated. It was about beginning to understand students in a more meaningful way, what their strengths are, what their interests are, what their preferences are, what their areas and needs are. So it's not like we're trying to recreate the same classroom everywhere, but we're trying to build tools so that certain foundational and fundamental beliefs are expressed and implemented in classrooms across grade levels, parts of the city, and programs. Again, to dive in again, deeper, of, to build and continue to kind of spread that word and to build that like. piece so that the no, culture we have here is a culture of institutionalizing racial equity and, and, and eliminating opportunity gaps. I'm hearing a lot more conversation about common language when we talk about equity and cultural responsive classroom or examining our implicit bias or our explicit bias. That language is moving through people's heads and hearts and mouths.